Hi, I'm Bruce Sine, and this is the switch play. This is the fourth play on our vertical concept. Uh, it's pretty much just like the fade route, but what we're done is we're switching routes. Uh, but we have some different options here for the X as he runs his inside stuff. Uh, this is the old run and shoot play, Miles Davis switch play. Uh, pretty much it's a complex type play. Uh, everybody else is going to run, you know, a four verts, and H only has to run a wheel, so there isn't much. Uh, teaching to those spots, but this X definitely has some rules, and um, it takes a little bit of time to run that. We kind of don't run this play uh, unless we have somebody here who is pretty much advanced and uh, understands, and then we teach him just the one person these routes. And the only time we run this is if you know we get that type of situation in the game where we want to, you know, switch it up. Maybe we can, this corner loves to follow this best receiver, and we know we can get somebody up in the in the. Uh, sideline on the wheel route but we definitely have some nice uh, reads in here and uh, like I said it's pretty complex and uh, it does take some teaching time it's not as easy as the rest of the stuff that we run alignment is a little different than the other stuff uh, H still lines up beside the hash like he would on any of the four verts but X needs to bring his his alignment in and he wants to be five yards from the hash mark uh, this is the same place that he lines up when we run our snag uh, and scat type stuff uh, because he's going to slant uh, to get up the hash and he needs to be a little bit closer because if he's wider he's not going to get to that point in the time that we can actually throw the ball. Uh, it's a two on one corner we're trying to put him in a bind is he going to follow the X on the switch route or is he going to follow H up on the wheel so we want to put a two on one on him and give him a, a horizontal read on which what he's going to cover. Uh, the rules, number one is going to run a switch route and he's going to make his adjustment breaks at 12 yards. Uh, he's going to slant 5 yards to the hash, get vertical for 12, and then at 12 uh, he's going to break. He makes his decision at 10 what he's going to do, but he makes the break at 12. And he can stay up on the seam, he could break on a dig, he can curl, he could post. And so, uh, like I said, it's a lot of teaching here on that switch route. H pretty much runs a wheel unless corner stays deep and then he breaks out. Uh, so it's pretty easy for everybody else but the X on this play. All right, here's the, the way we run the switch route. It's a 20-yard switch route uh, if he stays up on the seam. If the free safety overplays the seam route, he can dig or post underneath the free safety. So this is like if we get the middle of the field closed and there's just one safety right here. If he wants to overplay this route, not allow him to get up uh, on the seam, then the free say, uh, he, could, he could post to beat him inside or dig across to come underneath him. If the free safety sits here in the middle of the field, because we still have that vertical on this side, he's going to stay up there keeping the spacing of the numbers hash, hash, and the numbers that we do on our four verts. Uh, if any time when he runs his slant to five, and as he's getting vertical, he sees the wheel linebacker vacate the area, meaning he flies it over on the wheel, uh, he runs to the flats, because some teams that's where his coverage is, the flats. If this area is open, turn and sit. Let's just get, get the yards. Who cares what the free safety is doing? If wheel backer leaves, turn and sit and get the open area. So this is all the routes what we run against if the middle of the field is closed, free safety is in the middle. If we get a middle of the field open, where the free safety is now over top and he's kind of capping our route, especially on that vertical, uh, quarterback, I mean the receiver is automatically, the vertical is now gone and the free safety is overplayed. He now is going to post or dig just like he was. So it's basically the whole vertical part is gone on the seam because the free safety's capped that route right over the top and he's there covering it so now we're going to post or sit and then the same rule if the if the wheel linebacker takes off he's going to and vacates the area he's going to sit in the open window and take that so it takes a lot of time for him to get you know on on path of what he's doing with his routes and definitely him and the quarterback getting on the same path and seeing the same thing uh definitely takes a lot of time that's why i said uh it takes a more advanced receiver to run this and there's definitely a lot of reps that need to uh, be done to get this play done. 21 re 20 yard real route, wheel route, pretty easy. Uh, you know, he just wants to get vertical as he gets his width. So he wants to get up the seam, 
uh, get outside the, the seam, get up the numbers, and try to get to the area that you'd hit on a fade. Reads for the QB. Uh, one on one wheel route. Throw the wheel every time. Uh, we want to look at that corner and see if he's going to follow that X or if he's going to sit or he's going to do anything but butt turn and run with that wheel. If he does anything but turn and run with that wheel, we want to throw the wheel every time. Uh, just an easy throw. It's an easy catch, and uh, a lot of times with just the switching route, we'll mess with this corner, and we'll get him down the sideline on an easy uh, touchdown. Uh, we got a one-on-one -on -one switch read, meaning we don't know what the corner is going to do. So what we're trying to do is that's the two-on-one. So we want to try to eye the corner to the wheel route so we can come back to the switch. Uh, how that works out pretty easy too is because if we're eyeing the corner to the wheel and he runs, it allows this route to open up a little bit later because this one takes a little bit longer than this one. This one actually happens now and you can see it. So if we can eye the corner to him, then we can come back to the switch. And that's kind of what our switch read is. Uh, two on one, we don't know what this corner is doing. Definitely then we're looking from the wheel coming back to the switch. And this is what we're going to peek at the wheel and then throw the switch route depending on what he does. Uh, here's some options for the switch play. Uh, these are the ways the defenses try to mess with us and take away the play, their coverage issues, and this is how we, we kind of combat that type of thing. Uh, if we get a corner who wants to stay deep on the wheel route, and maybe the free safety comes over top and the wheel and they're kind of double covering this route, uh, the way we can take care of that wheel route is we'll come back with wheel out pretty easy. Uh, we'll let the corner run deep. We'll get the 15 turn, and then the quarterback will hit him on a back shoulder type uh, wheel out type play. Another issue, if a corner follows the switch route man to man. He follows it and then wheel drops deep. And he's dropping to the, uh, the flat route and they're doing like a man to man type play. And safety's got it under top, corner comes underneath, so kind of like a two uh, man under type coverage. Uh, we'll come back to switch corner. Uh, this is a huge run and shoot type play that Hawaii had. And what we'll do is X will start to run his switch and then take it back to the corner. Same area that the wheel would be. And then H is going to influence Will by running a flat route and getting out here now. So look what the happens. The corner will try to run. We'll try to get those two running to each other. And then either the flat will open up or later on the corner route uh, because the safety's looking for him to run some type of switch. He's not expecting him to break back out because he's looking for a post or dig or curl type route right there. So this is a huge play uh, against a two uh, deep five under type man-to-man uh, -man coverage. Uh, my name is Bruce Ian. My email address is ian at aol.com, E-I-E-N, and I'd be loved, eh, I would love to answer any questions you have. Thank you.